Boy, feels like we were just here doing this. Uh, front row center back on the air. Uh, we're recording this on uh, Tuesday, getting ready for a Sunday broadcast because my co-host is going away. You totally gave it away. I thought we were going to hide the oh, fact. Oh, we were going to we were going to be uh, so sly. It's truly Sunday morning, isn't it? We are live. <laughs> we're having our <laughs> having our steak and eggs here on Sunday morning. <laughs> They're not buying it. I don't know. I, my poker face is not uh, not showing. So. Yeah, Bert's going to Kansas City for some purpose. I don't know. To uh, you can tackle some counties, right? We will tackle some counties in Iowa and Missouri on the way. Iowa. Oh, so this isn't just okay. All right, because I know Kansas City, uh, unless they moved, are not in Iowa or Missouri. No, but in order to get to Kansas City, you got to go through Iowa. Oh, not me. Or Missouri. I'll find. You definitely got to go I'll through go Missouri. I'll go through Canada. I'm yeah. not going through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it, uh, so, but you do some stops along the way. So when you get to these counties, what do you do? You drive right through them. Sometimes you, you, sometimes get out you like drive to or? them and you, and you turn around because sometimes uh, if you're trying to hit every county, you, they're, they're off the beaten path, obviously. Sometimes you got to go to the border and turn around. Like, you know, right. this new county line is two miles from the interstate. So you get off the highway, you, you cross over, you come back. As long as you were in it, you were there. <laughs> you got to take some liberties when there's 3,142 places to visit. And let's remind the folks at home how many counties you have uh, you have zotzed off the list. I want to say it's like 2,052. We're about two thirds of the way down. Wow, I was just gonna say this is this is achievable at this point. Oh yeah. And then what? Europe? Uh, <laughs> I think I would love to visit all seven continents. Antarctica is going to be the beast. <laughs> it always has been. Yes. Anyway, we're here to talk movies, not counties. Um, although I think you should have a uh, county-based uh, podcast because uh, there can't be too many maniacs <laughs> like yourself doing this. There's some. I, I, you're not there, alone. There, there's about. There's yeah. You should actually, actually have a club. There, are, there actually is a club. You should join that club. I am a part those of that are, club. Those, you're a part of that club. Yeah, well, I am the, a part of that club. Have they had any kind of uh, you know meetings? They conclaves? do have. They have meetings once a year. At they a should. They should meet spot. a different county. They they meet in a different different <laughs> different uh, city every year. Oh lord. <laughs> oh, Tulsa, Nashville, Knoxville. These are unwell people. Anyway, uh, we all need a hobby. It's we fun. get around. Indeed, they do. But um, we talk about movies here. Hey, uh, let's actually, to recap, you know that Dr. Sleep thing uh, didn't do so well last weekend, unfortunately. It, uh, was it number two? After it was number two, yeah. They were projecting, I think they were hoping for a $30 million opening. I think it uh, landed pretty soft with like a 12 or something. It was, uh, yeah. And now now there's a lot of like Monday morning, Monday morning quarterbacking going on. It's too, what happened? I mean, this was supposed to be uh, Warner Brothers' big, uh, you know, big. I think the big box release. office overall has been pretty dull. The it's past pretty month weak. Or so. Yeah, I think it'll get better. Uh, certainly, uh, coming up, we got some big stuff. Uh, In about six weeks, I think the box office is going to take there's off. A, <laughs> there's a little movie uh, that has already pre-sold its way to the top. I think so. Uh, little Star Wars action. Hey, how about that Apple Plus thing that opened up today? That uh, dropped, as they say, all the young kids say. And you mean um, Disney, Disney. Oh, did I say Apple? I'm sorry. Apple. It's confusing, man. There's too many damn streaming services. Uh, yeah, Disney Plus. Uh, so they were, uh, I guess they were supposed to roll out early this morning, but then they wound up. Uh, uh, there were some issues I heard. Well, there's some technical issues, and then I guess they threw the lights on early just to surprise people. And by 3 a.m., it was uh, it was go time, and people were watching. The big thing being, uh, speaking of Star Wars, the Mandalorian, which is um, which is their big flagship um, TV series, the first live action Star Wars. TV series ever really there's been plenty of animated ones but well, don't is... forget about the holiday special in 1978 <laughs> which if Disney uh, had I, any I know metal... Lucas has l forgotten about it but... yeah they're trying it was a great time. I was just watching this week an old clip on Conan O'Brien <laughs> when he had Harrison Ford on and Conan I remember that Conan just went there and Harrison Ford who obviously plays things he plays grumpy for laughs <laughs> and he, at one point actually he jumped across the chair and grabbed Conan by the throat mm. as he was going for the uh, holiday special and that actually is I'm glad we brought that up 
because we will be talking. I promise. I swear we're talking Star Wars <laughs> on this show. Uh, I have uh, reneged and uh, <laughs> welched on this deal twice now. So I can't do that to yourself or myself. I think I'm hurting myself by doing this at this point anyway. But we're here to talk about this decade that is coming to an end. The the tens are going away because uh, in about five weeks, six weeks, we'll be able to say we're in the 20s. And um, man, that feels weird. That makes me feel... Uh, at least it's something we can say. 20s, 30s, 40s. What the heck are we in now? We're the 10s. That's not, that's not a word. <laughs> that's, I, I could look that up in Merriam-Webster, and I will see the word 10s, I'm sure. You know sure. what? Like 2001 to 2010, I think aughts. that's called the aughts. They call it yeah, the aughts. That's, that was, that's not a word either. Well, you ought to say it more often. Yeah. Hey, but um bum <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to get started here on... Uh, so, oh, we're gonna, what are we starting with? Well, I tasked, I challenged Bert to come up with what he thought were the five, in his estimation, the five best movies of the tens. <laughs> Starting with 2010, Starting not, 2010. not 11. No, I, we, I thought we would, you know, I don't even know how you cut that off. I mean, that's all uh, I the beholder. Well, it's 10 everything. years if you count 2010 to 2019. Boom. Thank you. <laughs> there that is go. a decade. Math expert. Uh, By the way, before yes. we get started, sure. once again, um, we of course, this is Sunday morning, but if <laughs> we were pretending this was Tuesday. <laughs> yes, if we were. And we saw each other last on Sunday. That's true. What, if anything, have you seen between then and now? <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I've seen a bloody thing I wa- I taped I shouldn't say this I'll get to, no that's fine I ripped uh, <laughs> I ripped Glenn or Glenda last night Edward D. Wood Jr.'s uh, masterpiece in some ways um, did so you watch it? I watched just about all of it and I fell asleep by the time uh, Ed was stretching out uh, the Angora sweaters I was unconscious so I did not watch the whole thing I probably I did about two thirds of it though I think right. I made it about 45 minutes in and and that was that but um, yeah so uh, I watched two thirds of a movie since then and E2 <laughs> I've, I've watched Six movies since then. The guy's a machine. <laughs> and four episodes of the Brady Bunch. Well, of course. Actually, I watched some Gilligan's Island on Sunday. Well, there you on go. TV. Uh, some black and white. Uh, some that I had never seen. Season one. I was surprised at the actually amount of Gilligan season one that I have not watched. Wow, I've seen it all. So well, yeah, I'm but surprised. I just none that really rang a bell. I mean, I, I usually it's because the reason being is I would always opt for the color episodes. Sure. I always thought they were funnier. Although I will say, I was enjoying these black and white ones. That uh, actually, I think it was actually like episode two. They hadn't even built their huts yet. This was early on. I don't know how we got on this here on, <laughs> on Front Row Center, but here we are. But anyway, my, my yeah. other six movies. Yeah, sure. I watched something called Holiday for Heroes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Hallmark. <laughs> yes. I watched Aerobicide, otherwise known as Killer, Killer Workout. Workout. Absolutely. I watched The Lobster, which you and I talked about what, off air. What'd you think of that, baby? That was an odd one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Yorgos Lanthimos. That, that's exactly who it yes. was. Yeah. And then I watched... Uh, Something called it's called Murder Baby. Oh yeah, I saw that you had you had reviewed that. I one? reviewed that yeah, one. Yeah, it's okay. on Schlockmeisters now. And then last night I watched another Hallmark movie called A Shoe <laughs> Addict's Christmas. <laughs> oh, God. That sounds dirtier <laughs> than the other movies you watched. A Shoe Addict's Christmas. Right. Was this like a shoe sniffer or well, something? Well, they like, have they have to get <laughs> what is this? <laughs> pretty much anything that you can put in front of the word Christmas, they can make a movie out of. So <laughs> they're running out of ideas, I guess, if they're going to shoe addicts now. Shellfish on Christmas. Oh yeah. boy, I'm allergic. Okay. Okay, and then, of course, lastly, today, I watched a movie called Women Unchained. I remember that one. Yes. Yes. Classic. Well, he's been busy. I uh, I hopped in for sleep and dinner. <laughs> so I suppose you got a little of that in, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. All right. You can actually combine those two. Sleep and dinner? Well, no, you can combine <laughs> movies with your uh, dinner. That is true. Yeah. And actually, last night, I combined my movies with sleep. <laughs> so right. it all worked out well. All right. Well, this seems like a natural place to take a break. We'll come back, and uh, we will discuss our big list, the list that will, uh, you know, uh, kind of a good, we're probably one of the, we're probably like the first to do this. We beat everybody else. We'll be back in just a moment. Where's my music, everybody? Good Lord. Thank you. There we go. We'll be right back.
Thanks for listening to those commercials. And we are back on Front Row Center. This is our third episode. We did. We survived. We made three. This is probably the most productive we've ever been, at least in this kind of thing. Together, of yeah. course. Besides our masterpiece, Sicky. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a film. <laughs> we made a film very, uh, very early on. It involved um, very little existing footage of that. Still exists. Is there any? I think they're the opening title screen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to release in it. a few seconds. <laughs> I believe a um, we used some kind of potato. <laughs> There may have been a potato. Yeah, yeah. something. Were we killing a potato? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember the plot. I kind of remember the plot. Wasn't some guy who was just like... He I was, think you were trying to put your head in the microwave <laughs> at one point. And yes. Well, and as we know, that that is... Uh, <laughs> and I think later on, I was supposed to take a dump. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we didn't get to that part. <laughs> anyway, Sicky is not, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on this list of the uh, best of the tens. But um, anyway, uh, we didn't really flip a coin to, to for who to start. But since I uh, seem to hog the mic a little bit here, being the guy running the board, I'm going to let you start with your first movie that you consider the best of the tens. Well, it's probably good that I go first for two reasons. Okay. One, um, well, I guess just one reason. One, no matter what, I just could not narrow it down to six. Five. I have six. I have six. So hey, that's a jerk move. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there? So I will go first, and then boom, boom, boom. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get them all off. I don't know. I had a tough time here. You a swine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you you ready for number one? You know what? I'm going to go so. alphabetical here because okay. I, I mean they're really not in any order. They don't have to be in any order. I mean, they get, these are just ten. I mean, they don't see them as ascending. Descending. Well, you know what? It might not even be ten because. Well, be we, 11, could have, we could have some, no, we could have some crossover. <laughs> that is true. That is absolutely true. That's entirely possible. We might have six. <laughs> that would be alarming. That would mean that we should. Uh, <laughs> we probably won't. Our though. brains have fused. All right. My my first choice. Uh, don't have the year on this. I want to say it was 2017, maybe. It is an animated film, put out by the Walt Disney Company. Fascinating. Called Coco. Ah, Probably yes. didn't see that one coming, did you? I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay, all right. So I absolutely love that movie. I, I thought it. Was, I think it's the best Disney movie I have ever seen, at least cartoon wise. I still haven't seen it. I'm a little embarrassed. And then my uh, Isn't wife, your wife, Spanish, very much so, <laughs> Mexican, and uh, she. That movie ruined her. I mean, there's must be. I don't know what. I I know it's a Day of the Dead type of thing, and I know that there's. It's touching. It's it's emotional. It's. I mean, uh, my my wife was in tears watching it as well. Well, Pixar has that ability. I mean, I will say that uh, I don't even want to tell you what Toy Story 3 did to me. Um, and in fact, my kids would watch and, they, and they'd watch it at a younger age and uh, just put it on for background or for fun. And I would be coming through the room. I'd be like, oh, just, no, turn it off. No, I cannot fall apart. I, I mean, it's really that. Uh, yeah, Pixar's got a good one. I think Wally's very emotional. Wally I think it was good. You I got, mean, you got to watch Coco. I know. I you know. Have, do you it have looks, it in the house? Yeah. All right. Then stick it in. Well, all right. Well, there you go. Hey, we're going to do you a service. We're going to play a little bit of the Coco trailer just so you can uh, get a taste of what Bert's talking about. Here's the trailer. Every year, grandkids, cousins, pretty much everyone gets together. Even great grandma Coco. And the winner is Luchadora Coco. I tell her pretty much everything. I used to run like this, but now I run like this. It's just way faster. Life sounds like. Ah! Miguel, eat your food. Here, have some more. No, gracias. <gasps> I mean, see? <laughs> That's what I thought you said. It's like a uh, Jewish mother, Jewish grandmother. Eat, eat, eat. Uh, you know, that was quite impressive. You did not know... I was going to say that, and you still queued it up in time. Good for you. I have uh, these fingers here. 80 words a minute. Um, so did you see, you saw it in the theater initially? When I it did not. Out? No, oh, you did We picked up the Blu-ray for some reason okay, and okay. watched it, and it was utterly fantastic. Watched it again a couple days later. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, I mean, did, would you almost consider it a perfect movie, a flawless movie, a tight, tight enough that, I mean, where would you, put, uh, give me a, give me a star rating on that one. Are we talking uh, three and a half or I four? I would definitely say three and a half stars okay, on three that and one. Half. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, Excellent. it's so good. It's one of those movies I'd like to watch at least once a year. We can see that. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, I guess, uh, it's like a poker game here. Your he, turn. he played his hand and now it's my turn. Um, it's a film that, uh, again, I'm not entirely sure. I want to say actually, this is probably the same year as Coco, maybe a year before 2016. Um, 
I um, I had been looking forward to this thing, and um, I was aware of the filmmaker, but I um, I didn't think it would be this good. And in fact, actually, I saw it. <laughs> My daughter and I went to uh, the multiplex, and and we paid. I swear, but we we did do a little theater hopping, but we did pay. I promise. Ooh, I've never yeah. done that actually. Yeah, we we paid. We paid. Um, but it was a long we paid afternoon. Once. No, we paid twice. Oh, we good did for it. you. I okay. felt bad. I, I have done that. Just, I, can't I have. F- couldn't flush the, uh, you know, I want to support these people, you know. So anyway, um, we had gone to see The Force Awakens because we hadn't seen it yet. So we were a little late on that one. I think we had to wait a week later. So it was a Sunday afternoon. And we took care of that one. And we were blown away, of course, like uh, most people are. And uh, Force Awakens actually almost, I mean, it, it was on my first draft, uh, certainly. Um but then we thought, hey, let's squeeze one more in because we were dying to see this and we didn't think we'd get another chance to get to the theaters. So we decided to see La La Land. And I sure. am just, I was, I was, the, from the first scene on when people started busting out of the car and dancing on the freeway and singing, I was like, oh God, this movie owns me. And then by the second music, musical number where the uh, Emma Stone and her friends are stepping out and there's a whole musical number of their night on the town and everything. Um, I'm not a huge musical fan. I do like musicals actually, but... Um, you know, I'm not like a diehard, but this thing just won me over um, immediately. The colors, the the discussions of jazz music and like, do you uh, evolve? Does jazz music evolve or does it stay in the... Um in the traditional sense, uh, the love story, uh, the the ending, which someone who works here and I argue about constantly, uh, we <laughs> we go round and round. But you know what? Let me let's uh, let's listen to a little bit of uh, La La Land's trailer, and then you'll hear what I'm talking about. Probably hear a little music too, and we'll be back. Peace. Thank you. I can do it a different way. Oh, that's that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan Gosling on piano there. You're hearing uh, the repeating theme of La La Land anyway. So um, I um, I think, isn't that the movie that got kind of twisted around? Uh, they thought it won Best Picture that year, but then uh, was it Warren Beatty? Who- that, that is correct, and it was Warren Beatty and... Um- Oh, the woman he co-starred with, Faye Dunaway. Faye Dunaway, that's right. And he uh, read the wrong movie, and uh, it, the actual winner was Moon- Moonlight. Moonlight that year, yeah, yeah. Which I um, liked La La Land for the record. I, I didn't yeah. like it as much as you or as much as the rest of my family did. Ah, but I did see it in the theater, and I did enjoy it. I just loved it. And the and the argument that I have with Jill Weza, I name dropped this week, Jill, who uh, thought that at the end they should have gotten together, that it should have been a happy ending. And I said, absolutely not. There's nothing more romantic than uh, not, you know, star-crossed lovers, not, uh, f- you know, winding up happily ever after. I think that's uh, much more romantic, but she just... Uh, I think had they gotten together, would have won Best Picture. Oh, really? Yeah. That's an interesting... Okay, there's a there's an interesting... Uh, <laughs> I think viewpoint. Jill is right on on this one. I don't know. I mean, well, been, they've been too <laughs> syrupy and uh, kind of cookie cutout. That's just, that's too obvious. Yes, man. I don't know about that. But that's a Damien Chazelle movie who did it, went on to do a film called First Man, uh, which I still haven't seen yet, by the way. That's the uh, Lunar um, Ryan, oh, yes, Ryan yes. Gosling film. Uh, it's supposed to be great. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I think I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot. <laughs> oh, my. All right. I think we got time for one more off your list. Go right ahead. All right. Also from 2017, a drama. Uh, was nominated. Uh, I think it was nominated for a few awards, including Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor for William Dafoe. This one is called The Florida Project. Absolutely fantastic. Same film. year as La La Land, I believe. Yeah, so you read on 16, I and, think. Yeah. No, no, this is 2017. Oh, it's the year. Okay, same, same year, year as Coco. They did a film, uh, the guy who made that did a film prior. Um, Sean called, Baker. Sean Baker called this movie called Tangerine. That is a movie that he shot entirely on an iPhone. I, I, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. I, I did know there was a film like that, but if you have, have you seen the Florida Project? <laughs> Hasn't yeah, seen it yet. I've not, no. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic film. There's a the the little girl in there. Her name is uh, Mooney. Is her character name played by an actress named Brooklyn Prince? Just absolutely adorable and. 
some of the you should the, the Blu-ray shows some uh, uh, scenes uh, behind the scenes and the stuff and how they made her cry and it's just uh, unbelievable. really yeah and it, it's, it's not like they didn't like you know twist her arm or tell no, her her dog was dead no, or something <laughs> no but it's it's so endearing when she because <laughs> she's she has this really powerful scene and then um, uh, she got upset by it. I mean she's a little girl like maybe eight right. seven or eight and then they show a scene behind the scenes of her talking to her mom and she's you know the the director says I'm the best actress he's ever seen. It was just so cute oh, the way she said it, and it's like watching uh, Henry Thomas uh, auditioning for ET. And uh, have you seen ever seen that video? No. Oh, it's awesome. Cue it up on YouTube sometime. Uh, he, uh, it's it's a great s- sequence where uh, it's just like uh, you know pretending to be in character. They're not really reading from the ET script, but they have some <laughs> some uh, stand in is saying, uh, "Well, I'm from the government, Elliot, and I'm gonna take him." And he's like, "You're not gonna take him. <laughs> he's my best friend." He completely comes unglued. Apparently, he was thinking about his dead dog who had passed away recently. Well, it worked. It worked Good totally. And then, and, and then when uh, you hear Spielberg, uh, you know, when the scene they're finally done play acting, you hear Spielberg <laughs> in the corner. He just kind of with a shaky voice goes, "You got the job, kid." <laughs> it's pretty great. So let's also do a little bit of the Florida Project uh, trailer just to get an idea of what this is all about. Here gets arrested a lot. These are the rooms we're not supposed to go in. But let's go anyway. <laughs> Could you give us some change, please? The doctor said we have asthma and we gotta eat ice cream yeah. right away. Here you go. Hey, Lee, got a situation here. Open up. It's only the second week of the summer and there's already been a dead fish in the pool. We're trying to get it back alive. Water blooms thrown at tourists. <laughs> No wonder you like this. It's a bunch of kids getting in trouble. It was. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the, these kids live in a kind of a slum world. Their mother is yeah. a drug addict, prostitute, and it, brilliantly played by an actress named Bria Vinate. I'm not have sure you, if I'm pronouncing that right. Have but you seen her in anything since? No. Mm. And in fact, it looks like she's done very little. Huh. But my goodness, she was, she, she was absolutely fantastic in this role, too. To be fair, I'm dying to see this. I actually own it, and it's sitting on my shelf, and it's just like, because I knew I would love it. And um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I get must. to it. I must, absolutely. Anyway, speaking of get to it, we're going to get to a commercial and pay some bills. When we come back, we'll talk more about the top movies of the of the tens. And uh, we are wrapping this decade up. Not a moment too soon. <laughs> we'll be back. Call that Herschel Gordon Lewis music? There was like a little castanet in there. I don't think I've ever heard a castanet in like 2000 Maniacs. <laughs> Maybe you should watch Moonshine Mountain. Maybe that'll find <laughs> you. Have the Blu ray side I of the do. Herschel Gordon. That's a, quite a find. I can't afford that one. It's your turn now. It is my turn. We're on uh, front row center and we're counting down the our favorite movies of the tens. And it is time for me to play another hand. And we're going to talk about a Coen Brothers movie. You knew one of those would get in there. Inside Lewin Davis, a uh, huge, huge fan of that film. Uh, we, it is about a folk singer uh, played by Oscar Isaac, who uh, we got to know later as Poe Dameron. Um, he's a very down on his luck folk singer in the folk scene in New York, uh, based on an actual folk uh, composer and uh, singer named uh, Dave Von Ronk. And... Uh, I, I love this film. This is actually actually his uh, Star Wars cohort, Adam Driver's in there briefly as a guy, as a fellow who um, kind of guests on one, on one of their uh, one of their folk records. Um, but uh, this is a great you know if you have any kids in the house who uh, say hey I want to I want to become a singer I want to <laughs> I want to be a an acoustic uh, singer songwriter you show them this movie and see if they still want to. This is a bad. <laughs> this is a guy who's definitely down on his luck. Bad bad timing for all. Um, the soundtrack is great, uh, put together by uh, Marcus Mumford and uh, Chris Thiele, and um, just recreates a time and a place um, really well. And I, it's a, 
it's a little harrowing. It's a tough movie to watch sometimes, and the midsection kind of ba- you know bogs down a little bit when they meet uh, John Goodman, who is <laughs> I don't know what he is, but you pick him up on the road and um, he ODs uh, at an, in an overpass. Um, <laughs> spoiler, sorry, but um, you know this movie has a ninety three meta score. I've never heard of this movie. That sounds fantastic. It's so good. It's so good. It's just one of those great. It's just what the Coen Brothers do best. Um, and um, it, I think it puts some people off because it is a movie, which is what they do really well. It is a movie about losers and the lead character, Lewin Davis is like, has a black belt in losing. He is just a loser from the, from the top down. He, 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 you know, they say you make your own luck. Therefore, you make your own bad luck. And I think this year we're just watching this guy continually make his own bad luck and miss the boat every time. And he's kind of a genius. I mean, he's a great, incredible singer. And when he picks up the guitar and does his thing, it's very moving. But he's got a lot of failed relationships and just surrounds himself with the worst possible people. And I can't exactly say it has a happy ending. <laughs> but uh, Inside Lewin Davis, I was I was looking forward to this movie the day I heard it announced. It just sounded like my kind of thing. And I was right. And I love it. And I think it needs to be rediscovered. So check it out. It's out there. I'm sure it's streaming somewhere. So that's my... I'm not going to do a trailer because we're, as Bert uh, indicated in the break, <laughs> we're running low on time. So fire away with yours, sir. Is it my turn? Very much so. All right. I'm going back to 2015 with this one. And it's already been mentioned here. And almost made your list. This is Star Wars Episode Seven: A Force Awakens. I mean, I couldn't not pick that based on. First of all, I loved the film, and uh, it was it just encompasses my entire childhood. Does the Star Wars uh, Ninology, whatever the words are. <laughs> Ninology, <laughs> real good, real good. Yeah, we're gonna add that to the Merriam-Webster's uh, list. Yeah, I. Um Oh, what the hell. I guess this is a good time to play my card. So I was wrestling back and forth because I really wanted to put that one on there. And so I re- this is your number six. I would... Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Okay, I can live with that. Um, right. However, there is a there is a Star Wars... And I, I really, controversially, of course, which is just dumb, but I really love The Last Jedi. Um, that film got to... I did, too. That film got to me. The only people who didn't like it were stupid... F- Fanboys. Here we go. Watch your mouth. Okay. <laughs> we don't use the F word. <laughs> Fanboys. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, there actually, there was one more Star Wars film in this decade, and I think I like that the best. It's Rogue my favorite. One. Actually, it's Rogue One. I uh, Rogue One, for whatever reason, that thing just worked for me. I think it worked for me because it... I think when I, I walked out, I told uh, some people that I knew that that movie put the war back in Star Wars. That is just a straight up war film. Um, and um, I think some people didn't care for it as much because they didn't latch onto the characters very well. I found the characters very moving. I thought the Jin, uh, Jin Erso character was really interesting and tragic. And her father, who was forced to design you know, Death Stars <laughs> for the Empire. So. Um, yeah, Rogue One actually made my list. If I had a number six, The Force Awakens would as well. Uh, the Last Jedi wouldn't be too far behind either if I had to do a seven. I mean, I'm, this is this is a really good time to be a Star Wars fan. Unfortunately, uh, that word you mentioned before, Ugh. I don't know why there is a huge contingent of people. I think a, a lot of it becomes political because a lot of them are upset that women are being heroes. They don't like that, so they have an agenda that's being threatened. And so I... know, The Last Jedi was universally beloved by critics. It's got an an 85 meta score, which is off the charts. That and you is know, high, and, high, And you know what high. those fanboys will say? I've heard them say it. I've listened to them say it. They'll say, oh, well, critics are just paid off by Disney. No, I'm sure they that, are. I mean, they have to make, they make these excuses Ridiculous. for this film. I feel horrible for Ryan Johnson. <laughs> I mean, he just got, he he received, you know, and then the actress from The Last Jedi, uh, um, who played Rose, uh, she, I mean, she left social media she because. She got abused on Twitter, I, I think. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, I don't know. I, I thought this would be like, you know, the 10 should have been the decade of Star Wars and instead it's the decade of just sort of scratching your head going what what's going now from what I hear they're putting Star Wars, Star Wars movies on moratorium um I don't know if part of that is because of this whole weird backlash thing that they're dealing with. And I'm, I'm sure Disney, of all people, were thought they had struck gold when they, uh, they've they shelled out all the money for the Star Wars franchise. Like, yes, we've made it. We have, you know, the House of Mouse and we have Star Wars. And now they're just like, what's going on? <laughs> what's happening? Anyway, um, I threw Rogue One out there. So it absolutely is your turn. Oh, was Rogue One actually on your list? It's on my list. Oh, yes, damn. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Well, then it will come back to me. Uh, going absolutely. alphabetical here. Uh, I wasn't even prepared for this year. So <laughs> well, let's see. 
the you're uh, up. <laughs> I did. I did F. So now we are going to the O's. Yes. 2019. Ooh. Quentin Tarantino's ah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> I thought the movie was just utterly fantastic. I watched it twice uh, in the theater, uh, once with my parents. and That um, must have been interesting. Yeah, I, <laughs> it just happened to be there and... Uh, uh, we trying to basically said, hey, you want to go see a movie? And I, I thought they would like it, and they did. My mom does not like violence, but this one wasn't overly violent. <laughs> and they until the final reel, right? And this is, but even my mom said, you know, I hate violence, but those guys deserved it. <laughs> yeah, there was something strangely satisfying about that final reel, and I guess by now, I'm hoping most people have seen it. We can kind of talk about. And if you've seen Inglorious Bastards, um, you know that uh, Tarantino likes to uh, maybe uh, tinker with and uh, flick uh, history. history History a little bit, yeah, and uh, it's revisionist history, and both those films actually they share that in their DNA, and that they're both remarkably satisfying because everybody who gets it in both of those films absolutely have it coming. I found that finale actually uh, extremely moving. I kind of lost it a little bit in the theater for the sole reason that, especially at the end when. Uh, um, Rick Dalton is talking to Jay Sebring, uh, separated by a gate by uh, Polanski's uh, property. Mm -hmm. And the way the music was playing and the way they were filming it, and it was so satisfying to see the way things played out in Tarantino style. What could have been. Yeah, that you kind of get the feeling that, oh, wow, I mean, look what, look what we had. And as they're panning out, I think he kind of pulled up. He kind of, you know, would track upwards a bit and... Um, and you realize, and they put the the title on the screen once upon a time in Hollywood, and you realize, oh man, that was just a fairy tale. That wasn't real. But for a minute, you were so invested, and in I'm sure that's what Tarantino was trying to do. That you know, because that movie takes its time. It's a, it's one of those great. I I, I would equate it almost to it his. It never drags though. No, it's just kind of his hangout movie though. It's like Jackie Brown. I love Jackie Brown because you're just kind of hanging out with these really interesting characters, and it's not like you know this fast cutting in your face kind of movie. You're just kind of lackadaisical. You know, I mean the the sequence of the Spawn Ranch with um, Cliff. That sequence goes on forever. Cliff, Cliff and Clem. Cliff and Clem. Oh yeah, yeah. He uh, took care. Of, he t that was kind of almost a foreshadowing of what was to come. You know, um, for, I know you and I were very interested in the Charles Manson story and Helter Skelter, and we kind of fascinated grew up with it. that and yeah. listening to the Beatles and everything when yeah. we were in high school. Yeah. So we we're very familiar with that story. And Absolutely. I've been waiting for a, a big screen version of Helter Skelter for years, something to tackle. So I was really looking forward to that. But this film actually doesn't deal with Manson a lot. It's almost an afterthought in yeah. some ways. It really. Deals Deals with kind of the uh, change, uh, changing of Hollywood and how the, the old Hollywood and poor Rick Dalton, who is a uh, uh, Western. What's the, do you remember the name of his show he was on? Uh, uh, it was sort, sort of, of like L, I think. Yeah, it's like yeah. the Rifleman or like with Steve McQueen. The, Lan you know, the Lance. Uh, Lance. So he was doing Lancer uh, later. He was on a different one too. But um, it's funny. I, I do watch a fair amount of those cheesy westerns on our local uh, affiliate MeTV. Uh, it must be it must be a sign of age and getting old. And uh, and they recreated that kind of Western really well. I mean, he's got very, uh, you know, cheesy, heroic. Uh, the little girl in that movie who was, uh, I can't remember her name either, but she was absolutely wonderful as well. Just uh, oh, Even the bit when he was doing the commercial for Green Apple. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and that little dance he was doing oh, and sure. he was singing. Well, we're behind the green door or whatever that. Yes, that, that was part was, of like Hullabaloo. That yes. was kind of the uh, the dance uh, kind I mean, of a hipster totally, show of the totally era. It captured that era. Yeah, it did. I it's, didn't live through that era, but. Uh, you felt like you were there. Yes. I mean, I think you just feel like it was, it was nailed, but. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, I, it's, you will be pleased to know that that movie, not on my five, but it definitely was close. As you can see, uh, my list here was one of the last ones I thought of. And in fact, the only movie I plucked out of this last year, out of 2019. So uh, there was nothing else in 19 that made it to my list. Speaking of my list, I have another strange one coming at you, one that not a lot of people saw, but I love, uh, required repeated viewing because I didn't quite get it the first time I watched it, but it was something about it that I had to revisit. And now I probably revisit it at least probably three times a year, and that is uh, my favorite filmmaker, my favorite domestic filmmaker, Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, I thought you were going Graydon Clark. <laughs> so close, so close. Uh, the Master, uh, with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Joaquin Phoenix, uh, sort of our national treasure, Mr. Phoenix. Um, <laughs> but uh, The Master, I had heard about this thing as a film that was going to tackle uh, Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard, which at the time, and probably still is, a bit of a hot-button topic in Hollywood. Hollywood with Tom Cruise and uh, John Travolta, all the power players kind of uh, embroiled in that, uh, some would say cult, some would say religion, whatever it is. Um, but the master set in uh, post-World War II 
is about uh, and Joaquin Phoenix plays a guy uh, named Freddie Quell, who is completely a bro- just an absolutely shattered, broken man, um, a shell of a man. He's a complete alcoholic. He will drink anything. Um, in the beginning of the movie, he actually, I believe, he mixes. Um, I think he mixes mouthwash with um, gasoline from a, a, a missile on a submarine. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> he would go anywhere. Uh, he eventually gets a job at a uh, department store, and he starts uh, drinking. Um, he works in the photo department in the kind of uh, classy, like, family photo department. He starts drinking, like, a uh, solution that they use to process photos <laughs> uh, mixed with whiskey. <laughs> so, uh, How is this man still alive? You know that that's not unusual. Eventually, you get to the point where your your insides, I think, kind of process that well. He certainly, w- I would call him barely alive. Well, as he's uh, drying out, he winds up um, meeting um, a man call who calls himself the Master, um, and he is beginning to start an interesting kind of religion slash cult that um, kind of has people processing their pasts and reliving their past lives, kind of that Shirley MacLaine type stuff, you know, and they meet on a boat and they seem to have funding from wealthy people and you know, it's funny because it's kind of a plotless movie. I mean, that that really, I think I just told you the whole film and yet I didn't. There's so much more going on. There's a lot of interesting character stuff going on. Um, the master's wife seems to be kind of pulling the strings a little bit. Uh, Freddie becomes kind of enamored with these people because he just has such a um, uh, exuberant and uh, charisma char- charisma about him that just kind of sucks him in like he, like he does, like a cult leader would do. Um, but Freddie, he kind of meets his match with Freddie uh, and uh, the Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix character, uh, we discover, will not be contained. He's an animal. And uh, I just, I love this film. I think it says a lot about uh, where we are as America. It says a lot about religion and faith and uh, it's also a love story believe it or not between two men but it's not like a consummated love story it's just an interesting kind of brotherly love story and I just I can't get enough of that film I you love know, it you know I've never heard of this movie yeah, there you go uh, it was shot uh, and played in 70 millimeter um, which is like that big large form kind of uh, filmmaking almost like IMAX and I did not get a chance to see it that way but um, of all the films that uh P.T. Anderson has made in the uh, tens, including uh, Inherent Vice, which almost made the list, and Phantom Thread, which almost made the list. I love everything he does. I'm just I'm a, I'm an apologist. There's very little he could film the phone book, and I'd say it's a masterpiece. I, I I am a bad critic in that way. Like he could make a really bad movie, and I wouldn't see it. I would just I would I, I would I mean I would see it, but I wouldn't see that it's a bad film. I'm just he's got me, and there's nothing I can do about it. So there you go, the master. All right, next mm-hmm. next would be going back to 2012. I think it's the old oldest one on my list. Um, I came across this movie a couple years ago. I'm not even sure how we came across it, but we, we own the DVD. It's a drama, kind of a coming-of-age movie called The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Have you seen it? I have not, but it is very popular here at the library based on a young adult book that uh, uh, goes out quite a bit. The guy who wrote it, Shabatsky, Stephen Shabatsky. He directed it as and, well. Oh, he directed the movie as well. I didn't he know did. that. He also directed the film Wonder based on that uh, young adult kind of uh, juvenile book. So yeah, I love this guy. film. Love this film. It's basically uh, about a freshman in high school. It's a little bit awkward, maybe. Maybe, but he somehow befriends a couple of seniors. Uh, Emma Watson is is one of them, and uh, this guy named Ezra Miller. That's his, that's his name. His name is Patrick uh, in the movie, but playing the playing the Flash in Justice League leader. Did on. he? Yeah, yeah, and uh, He's the only good part of the of Justice League. <laughs> Paul Rudd is also in this. He plays a teacher as well. But uh, I, the the lead character's name is Charlie. He's somebody that I, I seem to be able to relate to a little bit. Like I could have had his experience in high school. I didn't, but uh, I, I could have. He seemed. Uh, just a little bit out there a little bit and I don't know it's it's hard to describe it's got a great soundtrack as well there's a, a great David Bowie song in there Heroes and um, just a fantastic film hugely popular around here um, I can see it being popular with kids yeah I mean, it's, it didn't it's popular do, with the teens in my house it didn't do a lot when it initially ran but I think it uh, got legs later on in home video and streaming and all that so uh, we actually had that book it's one of the few books since I've worked here at the library that was challenged by a group the book oh, they wanted Lord. they wanted it removed from our shelves so why uh, <laughs> you know I, again I, I've seen the movie yeah. multiple times uh, maybe there's some subject matter but there's not I mean there's no sex in this movie 
And maybe there's one that's kind of hints at sex, but there's no uh, there's homosexuality in it. Maybe that's oh, I think you just found uh, the buzzword for this uh, group. <laughs> so anyway, well, tell, tell me tell me this place won, and you still have oh, book. we always win. We Good. don't. Uh, yeah, we're 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 the library. We win. Good. That's Lord. what we do. Anyway, um, so we each have one left, right? We do. All right, we're gonna come back talk about that, and I promise we're gonna have a microscopic Star Wars <laughs> chat. I swear to God, somebody help me. We'll be right back. All right, back to front row center. We're on the clock here. Your <laughs> turn. Go. Cram this list. All right, this is actually, uh, I'm glad I saved this for last. Again, it wasn't really in any kind of descending order, but this is probably, definitely, <laughs> my favorite film of the 10s, and that is David Fincher's The Social Network. I don't think any movie, if you're looking for a film that captures lightning in a bottle of what life was going to be like in the 10s, this happened early on, too. This, actually, I believe, was 2010 when 2010 it came is, yeah. holy it crap, it has a 95 meta score. I saw this movie in the theater as well, and I thought uh, Jesse, what's an Eisenberg? Eisenberg, yeah. I thought he was fantastic. Completely brilliant. I don't, completely brilliant. From what, I've heard, from what I heard at the time, they said his portrayal of Zuckerberg was, was kind of spot on, although I think I've learned <laughs> over time that his Zuckerberg isn't quite as... Uh, much of a savant as yeah, uh, the way Eisenberg yeah. I don't know. We don't actually know that, and I, I get a... I, like any good uh, like docudrama, or biography film, I think if you capture the person's essence, you're not going to get everything exact, but if you capture what they're about, I think you're successful, and I feel like this movie was remarkably successful. They, uh, uh, Aaron Sorkin wrote the script, and he's one of our, just again, crown jewels of uh, writers. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, Zuckerberg obviously is the guy who started Facebook. Face- we're it's talking about the Facebook movie, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the story of Facebook. Uh, how Facebook got started. Yeah, yes. and, and again, people argue about the fact that, oh, no, this isn't exactly right, or other people, or the Winklevoss twins will say, hey, no, 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 it didn't happen like that um but even just as a as great drama and uh, you know you would think a, a movie about a bunch of uh college nerds uh creating a social media page how could that possibly make an interesting movie for me it's one of the most riveting films not just of the decade but ever made uh and i i love it i return to that i probably watch this once a year and as we know uh how facebook has really become so uh so ingrained into our life and various other uh, social media things and uh, cellular communication and all that, that this uh, the social media was basically just uh, letting us know of things to come. So I think uh, for me, it is the movie of the 10s. That's number one for me. And we're going to kick it over to Bert for his number one. Here we go. Well, again, I'm going alphabetical, so I don't right. really know what's number one, but my last movie came out in 2017. It was nominated for Best Picture. It should have won Best Picture, <laughs> in my opinion, and it probably would have won, except the film that won that year, The Shape of Water, was... <laughs> universally beloved by everybody. It wasn't just loved by I like your it. film snobs. <laughs> it was loved by people who like love stories. And right, right. It's just, you know, but I always laugh because I... But I that's chu- not my movie. I chuckled when that won because I, told, I turned to my wife and said, wow, Creatures in the Black Lagoon just won, a, won the best picture in some ways. Yep, a woman who has sex with a fish. Bingo! But anyway, the movie that should have won and the movie that won for uh, Best Actress that year and Best Supporting Actor that year, Frances McDormand and Sam Rockwell, was ah. three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which I've saw in the theater. I've seen it multiple times. And I just, it's just a, I, you there's know, not enough words to describe how great that film is. It is great. I've seen it. I loved it. I've only watched it once because for me, it was a little hard to watch. It's funny though. There's a <laughs> lot of extremely funny. comedy in no, it too. Very, it, very funny. I have fallen in love with Sam Rockwell ever since Oh, he's amazing. He's, he's been amazing. Everything he does I, is I fantastic. I fell in love with him when he was playing Chuck Barris in <laughs> Confessions of, <laughs> of a Dangerous Mind or he whatever that George was. played George W. Bush somewhere too. Oh yeah, on Vice. Yeah. Advice, yeah, he was that very well. Yeah, um, yeah, I got. I've been actually meaning to watch that again. And um, but you know, what's funny. And, and again, of the five you mentioned, would you consider that maybe closer to your favorite of that five? Uh, very I mean, close. Number, okay, I, I think I th- I, I'm really God. It's because I regard I actually regard that film and the Social Network. They do seem to share a little bit uh, some traits. And the trait for me is that. I think Three Billboards really had its finger on the pulse of where we were kind of at as a country right now, because um, that deals with some uh, definitely some ra- ra- racial, racial things. Issues. Some uh, I think some gender things are going on there. I think that uh, uh, the Me Too movement is sort of represented in all that, and um, 
even just like uh, cultural things like uh, life in the life in the deep south. And it was uh, just very realistic to me too, because yeah, yeah. Uh, ultimately uh, there was a crime that happened that wasn't resolved. Yeah. We thought at one point, oh, I think we're going to find out the answers, and it turns out we didn't. Um, and it was kind of shrugged off. Seemed I mean, real. Yeah, it seemed real. It did very much so. So, and I think that both of those movies, this, uh, that, there's a double feature for you: the Social Network and Three Billboard Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. <laughs> so, uh, really tell you, I think those two films could represent if you had to put them in a time capsule and say, "What is life in these ten, in the tens like?" I think both those films would be a really good uh, good place to start. So, there we go, folks. We're the first out of the gate. I think we beat everyone else in uh, putting out their uh, best of the decade uh, lists. Uh, we'll uh, please, uh, if you're listening and tuning in, uh, let us know what your favorite films of the decade were. Let us know what you thought of our choices. Maybe you think we're completely full of. You know, this was our baloney. film snob episode where we a little bit instead little of bit. instead of talking about oh the crap we usually watch <laughs> right <laughs> the the low budget B movies and the slasher well, movies. Which, by the yeah. way, I do have some horror movies on my list that I just kind well. Of and let's you know what? Okay, so <laughs> we're rescheduling the Star Wars chat All right. <laughs> again. We're gonna do it in 2024. No, I don't know when we're gonna get to it, but I promise you, we're gonna get to it anyway maybe we'll just dedicate a show clearly something's happening here so anyway but let's talk about our um our runners up our also rans i'd like to actually hear what some of yours were so all right well just just rattle rattle through them all right I'm, uh, okay go ahead okay all right i'm gonna give you a, I, I i two two categories here uh, these are also rans that are just kind of horror and b-movie stuff that yeah. you know the kind of stuff that we really but made grew up the, on but made in the made in this decade okay, yeah, we're gonna good. we're all gonna right. go yeah. with it part one absolutely Kong Skull Island, which I loved. <laughs> I have to watch that. Yeah, the Baba Duke. That was a good movie. Piranha 3D came I, out in I 2010. I avoided that. I figured it was garbage. There is a 3D severed penis floating in the water. There it is. Fantastic, folks. bouncing around. That, that's how it got on your list. You <laughs> it know, was a great. You know, it was a, it was it was it was well done film. Uh, the Conjuring shows up in there. Interesting. Godzilla, the one with Brian Cranston. That was, I, I really enjoyed. That was that. really good. I just watched it that was recently. Really good. I wasn't. I had low. Did you see the next one, King of the? I the did monsters? not see that one yet. I want to. It's kind of fun. The other movie, which I thought was my favorite horror movie of this decade, It Follows. Oh, sure. That was great. That was really good. Now, if you want my also rants that are not horror movies, yes. <laughs> we got, uh, I'll just rattle them off here quickly. Here Love, Simon, I, Tanya, Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, <laughs> Baby Driver, Edge of Seventeen, Nocturnal Animals, Wind River, Hell or High Water, underrated, ridiculous film called The Nice Guys, uh, <laughs> Manchester by the Sea, Green Book, Lion, Boyhood. We should talk about Boyhood sometime. Wow. The Muppets. Ted. Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> Django Unchained. Uh-huh. Birdman. Brooklyn. The Age of Adeline. Creed. And Deadpool. Hell of a list. You are going to be surprised by how many crossovers there are on our list, actually. I'm impressed. Okay, so um, I do not have like a separate horror category. I, I avoided most of those, uh, but um, I would actually add it follows to mine. You are neglecting your past. I am just trying to... you got to balance your film snob with your <laughs> with your realism. I've been working on that for, for, for 50 years almost. It's time <laughs> to watch Joysticks again. Oh, there we go. Um, I would I actually put it follows on my list. I had forgotten about that. That one was... That one I thought was uh, a cut above. I think that movie had like a really interesting uh, theme behind it. Of, I agree uh, that's completely. Terrific movie. Here comes my list, folks. Toy Story three, Inception. Gotta love uh, my uh, my uh, what's his name, Christopher Nolan. Um, Scott Pro- Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Uh, you'll hear some uh, the social network. The King's Speech. The Tree of Life. Love that film. Super 8, big fan of that. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, Moneyball. I'm surprised Moneyball. Did you see Moneyball? I've seen Moneyball. I, I own it. I think that's a great film. Yeah, it's um, a good movie. The Muppets, The Avengers, The Dark Knight Rises, uh, Django Unchained, John Dies at the End, a little uh, visit. So okay, there's a little B-movie in there. Yeah, yeah. Completely, uh, okay. Star Trek Into Darkness, uh, the controversial. Some people hate that film. I love it. Uh, Prisoners. Did you ever see that thing? No, I'm not aware of oh. it. Uh, Boyhood, <laughs> Guardian of the Galaxy, Birdman. Is this sounding like a uh, broken record? The Theory of Everything. I like that a lot. The Stephen Hall. Uh, yep, I, thought I thought that was a good movie. Really well done. Big Hero 6. Big fan of that. 
The first John Wick. I haven't seen two and three yet, but I thought the first one was kind of interesting. The Force Awakens. We kind of talked about that. Wreck It Ralph. I'm surprised you didn't. Uh, you Ralph know, I is... haven't seen Wreck. I own it, but I haven't. I don't you think should I've watch seen that it. just for your video game past. I think that would make. I would probably have wound up on your list if you had given it a look. And uh, didn't make my five. Close to cracking my my five, becoming a six or a seven, whatever. Once upon a time in Hollywood. So really, a lot of crossovers there. A lot of stuff that uh, was repeated. I guess we kind of had uh, uh, mutually unique. Uh, but yet the same uh, and, and no mention of one. Rattlesnake not even as an honorable mention <laughs> ah well we'll see how uh, maybe we'll see how Rattlesnake 2 plays I don't know uh, we'll see how that goes so we're kind of basically out of time uh, that took the whole show I thought we uh, for some reason I thought that would go fast but uh, there we are this is our uh, our special edition our top 10 of the 10 of t- top 10 of the 10s I guess um, so feel free to I would say hit your video store <laughs> which is my basement. Which is his basement, I suppose. I uh, have to head up to Belgium. Uh, hit your library, because you will find all these films in your library, and you don't have to spend a nickel on them. That's a beautiful thing. That's why we love libraries. And we love libraries because they host this show and this radio station, CPL Radio, and we are the only movie review show. In Cedarburg, Wisconsin. In Cedarburg, Wisconsin, absolutely. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week if you're listening to us Sunday night, but this is Sunday Night Live, so of course. Anyway, we'll be back with uh, new movies. Uh, we'll probably be talking about Before the Month is Out, Frozen 2. We'll probably be talking about the new Star Wars film, all that kind of stuff. Is there we'll a probably, new Star Wars movie coming? Uh, I heard something about that. Maybe we won't talk about it sometime. <laughs> no guarantees. Anyway, thanks for tuning everybody. Until then, until the next decade, we'll do this again. Bye. Bye.